All right, so going back to the previous theme, um, pressure passing, trying to make it as miserable as possible for the guy on bottom. So once you pass the guard, he doesn't even want to re-guard. Like he doesn't want to go back there because it sucks so bad for him to get through. So the previous one, we kind of went through his guard. This time we're gonna do the standard, or the traditional stand up, break the guard. I'm not gonna really cover how to break the guard because um, that's not the point of this one. The point is what to do with your hands and hips once you break the guard and how to make it miserable for him. So what I like to do, kind of my go-to guard break, two hands in the collar, get his sleeve, trap it in there. Again, this isn't the point of this video, but this is what I do. Put this foot up so he can't grab it because I'm controlling this arm. Posture, I'm gonna break this. Now when I break it, I wanna drop my knee down. Um, and I've got the control of his leg here, so he can't, he can't connect his heels, or it's difficult for him to connect his heels. I can use my hips forward to stop him from connecting that. I'm gonna secure a collar, come under the leg, and pass this collar to this hand. Once I make this connection, he's, he's done. It's, it's, the pass is over. Um, what we were talking about earlier is making sure he doesn't lift this elbow up and allow this leg that I could cause. I don't know what's gonna happen, but it's, it's gonna cause me trouble or issues. So we get this, I'm just gonna connect everything tight here, pull him in. Now, as I just gonna lift this knee up and put my other knee down, and this hand is gonna go to his belt or his back of his pants and follow this one through. Now, this is the port and point that makes it really miserable for him. I'm gonna switch this and kind of keep this leg here. I don't, want, I, don't want, I don't want him to just give me the pass. I want to make his life terrible. I want to make him suffer here. I'm gonna grab the back of his pants and just roll him back on his neck. Just for my buddy Dan here, I'm gonna let out the grip a little bit, but I'm just gonna bring him back here. I'll use this knee behind his butt to keep him crunched up. I'm gonna take this around here. I'm gonna take my left elbow and put it on the mat. So there's a bread cutter right here, and a lot of times you can get the tap, or you can just choke him. And I'm just gonna chill here for a little bit. I mean, it takes me zero energy to be right here, and he's, uh, all the weight's on him. For the pass, like, if I don't get the tap, and he's, he's really flexible, Dan's pretty flexible, I'm just gonna kind of pressure my hips in and get his feet looking away from me. And I'm in a pretty good position right here. I've got his hips blocked, and I can secure the side control. All right, so this is the position I want to get to. I'm gonna control this collar, come under the leg, put this on my shoulder, and keep this tight. Oh, I can pinch my head here so he can't swing this over. If he can swing this over somehow, like now we're in a yeah, knee shield or something. And it's still not great. It's not great, but it's, 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 it's shutting down what I want to do. Take this hand, and the deeper I can get this hand, the worse the choke is gonna be once I pass. So I can open this up and pull this collar into my hand. And I like to go like thumb, four, four fingers over, thumb in. When I switch my knees, this hand just follows the knees. I don't want to switch this here, and then, especially with Dan, you'll triangle you right away. And switch this here, come under, grab the belt or the hips, elevate them and keep my knee under his butt. So even without this, he's not gonna roll out. Roll him back on his head, like you just want to roll him in half and just fold him over my forearm while my elbow goes to the mat. To pass, just lean into him, get his knees away. I got this underhook over here for hip lock or pass. 